Hello everybody. Thanks again for visiting my YouTube channel. Here we discuss the Lord's Recovery Movement of Witness Lee, also known as the Local Church Movement. Well, we're continuing with our examination of shepherdingwords.com, the slightly desperate, panicky, and poorly conceived website of the Blended Brothers, the guys at Living Stream Ministry who are disseminating literature by Witness Lee. And as part of their attempt to sell their material, they make highfalutin claims about themselves and him. And that is a big part of their business is to gain control of members, keep them in the group, and they make non-biblical claims about themselves, several of which are in this website. And so we're going to go over a couple of those today. I want to go back a little bit talking about deputy authority on yesterday's video and I implied it but I did not explicitly say that one of their last points was even if the deputy authority is wrong about something you still have to submit to them. In a sense that's irrelevant because the deputy authority that the Lord's Recovery is talking about really doesn't exist. They're talking in general if somebody is super spiritual and is in line with God's economy and God's recovery and God's move on the earth, then you need to submit to them. But there's nothing biblical about that. If you really listen to how Paul talks about his ministry, he ministered to people that were willing to listen to him. And he knew these people were hearing other apostles. And all he did was plead his own case. He did not ever tell anybody, you must submit to me. Now, sometimes he would say things like, do as I told you, or shall I come with a rod or with gentleness? And that kind of implies he has authority over them. But you have to realize that it was always contingent upon them accepting him. Okay, He was saying that based upon a mutually assumed relationship with these people. If they were still willing to accept him, then they could receive his rebukes and receive his guidance in a voluntary way. But it wasn't like Paul had the right to just march in anywhere he wanted to and claim to be the authority. It just doesn't work that way in the New Testament. And this is more or less what the Blended Brothers want you to think. They want you to think that if you don't submit to Witness Lee's ministry in a way that turns your life over to it, then you are wrong with God. And this is absolutely false. So, moving forward, we're going to cover a couple of smaller points. On the main website, there's a statement talking about the Lord's recovery and the local churches, and they make the statement, shortcomings of individual saints or churches nullify neither the vision of the Lord's recovery nor the standing of the local churches on the unique ground of oneness. Well, that's true for any church. Shortcomings do not nullify our standing before God. We don't stop being God's children because we sin. So that's true for any church. But the second part of it is just simply an empty statement because they say it nullifies neither the vision of the Lord's recovery nor the standing of the local churches on the unique ground of oneness. Well, both those things aren't real. There is no Lord's recovery in the way they envision it. And the unique ground of oneness on the boundaries of the city is not real either. They're both false teachings. So it's not the shortcomings of saints or churches that nullify those ideas. It's the simple fact that neither one of them are true. So this is the kind of thing they do. They proceed with the presumption that these ideas of theirs are real and then they talk as if they are and make other statements based on them. But there's nothing biblical about the Lord's recovery. And I've already talked about this in episodes four and five of this series. And I talk about the fallacy of the Lord's recovery in episode two. And you can refer to those. A lot of these general concepts they defend on this website are fully discussed in this series in the first 10 messages or so. So I encourage you to go back and view those. So the next subject up on the shepherdingwords.com 
is the idea of the minister of the age not infallibility. And this one's pretty easy because I already discussed the baselessness of the idea of the minister of the age in a previous video, specifically episode 6. And again, they're giving this specious basis for there being a minister of the age. And again, let me tell you that the three bars on the jail cell that holds members in the Lord's recovery, the idea of the Lord's recovery, the idea of the local ground, and the idea of the minister of the age are all tools they use to try to teach people that they can't be anywhere else but the Lord's recovery. And so you can go back and listen to those videos, but the idea of the fallacy of infallibility, this is again one of those baseless statements because since the minister of the age doesn't exist, arguing that infallibility doesn't matter is meaningless because there is no minister of the age. So it's not a biblical concept. All these things are based on seeing patterns in history and vague, at the best, patterns unprovable patterns in the Bible. But there's no teaching about any of these things. There's no specific teaching in the Bible about the Lord's recovery. There's no specific teaching in the Bible about the local ground. And there's no specific teaching about the minister of the age. So they're proceeding from the hope that you buy these ideas without really examining them. And they believe them. But so what? As I've said before, I could say, I believe I'm the man in the moon and I supply all of Earth's green cheese. So what if I claim it? They can claim all they want. You don't have to believe it. You have to be convinced that these ideas are biblical. And I've made the case in this series that they are not. Plus, if you look at the fruit of them, after decades, you can see the damage. These controlling doctrines have damaged many, many believers. And they produced an organization which is extremely defensive. They have a wing of their organization which is entirely devoted to defending their image. And it gets very aggressive. It does many non-Christian things like suing and spying and creating rumors. And this is just something that we're not supposed to be doing as Christians. I don't know of any other Christian organization that does these kind of things, that hires private investigators to investigate people that speak out against them and that kind of thing. And one reason I want to be anonymous is I don't want to put up with that. That's what you deal with with these guys. These ideas, we'll get into a few more that I haven't covered, some of the history ones, and we'll see how it goes. But that's it for today. Thank you again for listening. Take care.